I'm your host, Renee Joshua Porter, and I am so excited that you decided to join us today. We have a fantastic show in store. Now remember, working with what you got is all about you realizing you have more resources, you have more time, you have more talent, you have more people on your side, and if you can take the knots out of your mind, there's nothing that you cannot do. Well, we're excited because we're going to start, like we always do, and cook. What are we going to make today? Well, we're going to make a patty. Some cultures call it a patty. Some call it an empanada. Some call it a mini meat beef, beef or meat pie. We just call it a patty. So we said, how can we make that patty and make it simple and make it economical and make it savory and delicious for your family? Guess what we're going to use? we are going to use tortillas. We're going to use tortillas. I took the burrito size tortilla, the grande ones, cut it in half. Here we go. Cut it in half. And then what we did is we take the tortilla and we put it in water. Why are we going to put it in water? Well, because guess what tortillas are made out of? Flour and water. So when we put it in water, it helps to make it easy to work with. So we take that tortilla, we put it in water. We're gonna take another one because today we're gonna to make two. We're gonna make one for our meat lovers and the other one we're gonna make is for our vegans or vegetarians in the group. All right, so we have two of them. We cut them in half. And then what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna use this napkin right here. We're gonna make a little egg wash. We take an egg and we would have beat it. I've actually put it right here inside of this cup. And we take that egg wash and we put it on the inside of the tortilla. Just really saturate it really good because this is actually going to serve as our glue to keep the tortilla sealed. All right. We got our egg wash on the inside and then we have our filling. What filling are we going to use? For our vegetarian one, what we did was we made some pinto beans and we took some mushrooms. We're gonna put one spoonful right in the center. The other one, what we did is we took some ground turkey, seasoned it up really good with our little spices, and we're gonna put it in the center over here. All right, so this one is our turkey. This one is our pinto beans and mushrooms together. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it over. That's all we're gonna do. And we're going to just try to pinch it a little bit. Pinch the other side. And believe it or not, it's going to stay. We do the same thing with our turkey. You might want to put a little less meat because you don't want it to puff up too much when it starts to bake. You like that? Wasn't that simple? So what we did, we had a large tortilla, we cut it in half, soaked it in water, put it on our pan, and then we just put our sealing. We put our egg wash on the inside, put our uh, center in the middle, and then now what we're gonna show you is what it looks like. All right, this is our bean one. See how it stayed? We baked it at 350 degrees for only 20 minutes, and look at that on parchment paper. And this is our turkey one. Delicious, right? Now remember I told you last week, it's real important that you eat the rainbow. What we just made was a lot of beige, a lot of brown. You can't have a plate without different colors represented. So what we did is we put it on a plate with our lettuce and tomato, and then we have some little other stuff we can add on here. We can put some little yellow peppers. We can add some more mushrooms. And look at that, isn't that beautiful? 
Is that gorgeous or what? I'm telling you, we are working with what we got. And that meal cost about what? $6? It was definitely under $10. Beautiful, right? Well, what we're going to do too is one of my friends, Jean Thompson, she sent in a working with what you got idea. So we want to share Jean's idea. Jean showed us how you can create canister out of water bottles. Isn't Jean smart? You better go, girl. Move my stuff out of the way. Hopefully you can see. We take a water bottle. We cut off the top. Right? Once you cut off this top, you have this. We took a plastic bag. Took that top. Put it through the plastic bag. Fold over the sides. And now put the top on. Guess what? Now we have our canister. Look at that. I filled it up with rice. Is Jean bright or is she bright? I'm telling you, you're catching on. It's time for you to work with what you got. And we have such a dynamic show in store for you today. We have a Black History celebration. And we have some wonderful, talented youth that are going to give tribute to the wonderful legacy of the African American arts. And we'll be right back right after this commercial. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Working With What You Got's Rant of the Week, where I will rant about many things that concern me. So let's get into it. I'll be honest, there are many issues plaguing the black community that concern me, but this will not be a black people do better rant. Contrary to the popular belief, we are a resilient, innovative, compassionate, strong, and very loving people. Although mainstream media would like you to believe otherwise, don't believe the hype. I know that it's very trendy right now to make fun of black people and everything that we do, uh, what we say, how we dress, but you know what? It's time for a change. With today's uh, Vine videos and social media sites and world star hip hop, it's easy to become brainwashed into thinking that black people are a hot mess, but that is false. We are natural born leaders, inventors, great thinkers, poets, chemists, artists, and you know what? It's just time for us to think higher of ourselves. February isn't even enough to contain our contributions to this country. In fact, 365 days of the year isn't enough to contain our contributions to this country. I used to complain about February being Black History Month and also being the shortest month of the year, but I realized it's my responsibility to acknowledge our history all year. I can't depend on the public school system. I can't even depend on my university to remind me of my greatness. It's not going to happen. We have to remind ourselves and we need to do it with a quickness. And I think a lack of self-esteem and a lack of self-worth is definitely reflected in the state of our black youth. Many of us have forgotten who we came from and where we came from. And unfortunately, it is very obvious, and I just think it's time for us to think higher of ourselves. As Ayala Van Dant would say, think higher of each other. Everything black is not bad. Everything white is not right. Everything white is not bad. It's just time for us to just think higher of each other. And with that being said, I would like to take this time to acknowledge our Native American brothers and sisters who were here first and still don't have a month. Think higher of each other. Thank you for listening. African Americans launched their literature in North America during the second half of the 18th century. Joining the war of words between England and its rebellious colonies with a special sense of mission. The earliest African American writers sought to demonstrate that the proposition, all men are created equal, in the Declaration of Independence required that black Americans be extended the same human rights as those claimed by white Americans. Sharing a social justice argument in the Christian gospel of the Universal Brotherhood of Humanity, African-born Phyllis Wheatley, enslaved in Boston, dedicated her poems on various subjects, religious and moral. The first African-American book to proving that Negroes, black as cane, were not 
inherently inferior to whites in matters of the spirit and thus could join the angelic train as spiritual equal to equals to whites. Composing poems in a wide range of classical genre, Wheatley was determined to show by her mastery of form and metric, as well as by learned subjects, that a black poet was capable of artistic expression as a white poet. In the footsteps of legendary African-American poets, I present 16-year-old James Seaton with his poem, A Time to Rise. Time to rise, man. Out of the ashes of dreams created by the fire of negativity and hatred, lies plated, served on a silver platter, and the lunch lady that is the media takes a spoon and splatters that bit of food on your plate. See, people today just consume Eating popular opinion and leaving no room for truth. Well, these lines that I create are meant to destroy these ways. Everyone, regardless of color, size, or shape, are beautiful in their own way. Little girl, you don't have to Photoshop your face. Little boy, you don't have to keep on playing games. Be you. Because listening to what your friends say will make you blue. But let me introduce to you a new color, black, because the sky ain't even the limit. Don't stop going to your cloud skipping, to the earth as a foreign image, so you can't even measure distance, to the moon becomes your Plymouth and the stars become Native Americans, because gravity is just a gimmick, a forceful prison that the world tries to lock you in. See, people don't want you up in the air. They want to see you underground. Using mental assassination as a shovel to dig up the ground and drop you down into a bottomless pit where no one can hear your shouts, your calls, you just fall and they'll use anything these days, even your neighborhood saying, how you gonna become a president born to a single mother in the hood? Saying, how you gonna own a business when you're on the blood gang's hit list? Like the only business you'll ever own is a drug cartel where you just get stoned. Like the streets are the only place you'll ever call home. See, this is why I don't rep spoken word. I rep unspoken words. Those cries you never heard. That stuff you don't see on the news. That child that was abused. That young man shot right on his avenue. That young single mother struggling to get a child some food. That dude that dropped out of high school. That kid that joined the gang because he had nothing else to commit to is true. Times are rough. But I'm still saying it's time to go up. Time to grow up out of that rocky soil. Get the haters slipping and tripping. I call that anointing with oil, man. Don't listen to them. Cut off that stem. Using the sword of positivity and the shield of faith. Because keeping that talk. That chatter in your ear is like disregarding the bite of a snake. Eventually, you'll become paralyzed, eyes blind, the time with your life wasting away. Eating lotus flowers is hour by hour, reality fades, and imagination becomes decay until all you're left with is a blank page with no pen, no marker, no spark to ignite the fire, no moon to get the tide turning. But I'm here to tell you that we all have the ability to be successful. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about being joyful. I'm talking about waking up in the morning and smiling, knowing that it's going to be a good day. But if not, there's a better tomorrow. A life of substance, not an existence that's hollow. No more being stagnant. Let's become addicted to making it happen. No more crying. Just a lot more smiling and laughing. And if love is a drug, then I guess it's time to start trafficking. Because even when we fall, it's time to get at it again. See, success could be inevitable. Barack Obama is living proof. Oprah Winfrey is living proof. Denzel Washington is living proof. Kerry Washington is living proof. Colin Powell is living proof. Condoleezza Rice is living proof. Al Sharpton is living proof. Jesse Jackson is living proof. As long as you stop dwelling in lies and start chasing truth. As long as you be bold and do the things people swore you'd never be able to do. It'll be your time to rise, man. It'll be time for you. Africans brought their dances to North and South America and the Caribbean islands as slave labor started in the 1500s. The dance styles of hundreds of African ethnic groups merged with European dancers, forming the extension of the African aesthetic in the Americas. 
dance has always been an integral part of daily life in Africa, in the Americas. It helped enslaved Africans connect with their homeland, keeping their cultural traditions alive. As before enslavement, African danced for special occasions, such as the birth or a marriage, or as a part of their daily activities, and dance affirmed life and the outlook of a better future. African Americans sang and danced while working as slaves, and as they converted to the religions of the Americas, they incorporated their tra these traditions in their religions. Blacks who worked in the colonies of Spain, Portugal, the Caribbean, and South America were given more freedom to dance than enslaved blacks in North America. The black codes outlawed drumming by slaves. Therefore, unlike in Cuba, Haiti, and elsewhere in the Caribbean, African drumming traditions were not preserved in North America. African-based rhythmic patterns were retained in the United States in large part through body rhythms, such as stomping, clapping, and patting juba. African found ways of getting around these prohibitions. Dances dominant through the 18th century included the ring shout or ring dance, the kalinda, the chica, and the juba. Join me in celebrating the African-American legacy of movement with dancer Jasmine Goburn performing His Eye is on the Sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, his eye is on And I know he watches over me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches. I know he watches. I People of African descent have long been involved in classical music as creators, interpreters, performers, and entrepreneurs. A number of well-known black singers 
from William Warfield to Jesse Norman have made their mark in the rarefied world of opera. So it's no surprise that even in the age of hip hop, young African Americans are a growing presence on opera stages around the world. The latter part of the 19th century saw the rise of soprano Ceci Rita Jones. Jones, who toured the United States and Europe, was adored by the public and feted by kings and head of state. She was the first African-American woman to appear at Carnegie Hall, singing popular songs, arias from La Traviata Barferdi, and was one of the first African concert singers to achieve international acclaim and success. She eventually founded her own touring company. We played tribute to the classical masterpiece Porgy and Bess with 16-year-old Kia Thomas singing Summertime. had a profound effect on the creation of early jazz. Many early jazz performers played in venues throughout the city. In addition to dance bands, numerous marching bands played at lavish funerals arranged by the African American, American community. The instruments used in marching bands and dance bands became the basic okay. instruments of jazz, brass and reeds. Small bands mixing self-taught and well-educated African American musicians played a major role in the development and dissemination of early jazz, traveling throughout black communities in the Deep South and from around 1914 on. Afro-Creole and African-American musicians playing in Vaudeville shows as to Western and Northern US cities. Thank you. 
out, bring it down, and it up. We pay tribute to another African American heroine. Her truth as an abolitionist and a suffragette still resounds today. The life of Sojourner Truth. Well, children, where there is so much rocking, something must be out of kilter. Now, I think between the colored folks in the South and the white women in the North all talking about their rights, the white man going to be in a hell of a fix pretty soon. <laughs> What's all this here talking about? When that man over there, he says that Women can't have the same rights as men because women needed to be helped into carriages and all the ditches and have the best of place everywhere. Well, nobody ever helped me into any carriage or over any ditch or give me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arms. I have plowed and planted and gathered from bonds and no man could head me and ain't I a woman? I could work as much as any man and I could eat as much as any man when I could get it and I could bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have born 13 children and I have seen them most all sold off into slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me, and ain't I a woman? Now they talk about this thing in the head. What, what, what they call it? Yeah, thank you, honey. Intellect. What does intellect have to do with women's rights or colored folks' rights? If my cup only holds a pint and yours holds a quart, won't you be rather mean not to let me have my little half measure full? That man right over there, he says that women can't have the same rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. Oh, uh, where did your Christ come from? Huh? Where did your Christ come from? From God and from a woman. Man ain't had nothing to do with that. And the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn this world upside down all by herself. Then these women together ought to be given a chance to turn it right side up again. And all of you men, you better look for me. I'm glad to see y'all can tell me. And I also journey. And God knows.